Welcome to the Devil's Friday. My name is Michael Schimke. I'm the CEO of Skatefree. We're running the show here every Friday, 11 o'clock Central European Standard Time, uh, essentially to allow you, the audience, to ask questions about um, data vaults, um, yeah, all kinds of data-driven solutions, cloud technology, big data, NDP systems, and so on. And um, you can submit questions here. You can either raise your hands um, here in a, in, a, in, a, in a live session. You can use a chat here. You can use a Q&A. I also show you a form where you can upload your, pic your question, maybe with some team pictures or whiteboard pictures or whatever um, afterwards. Um, and that essentially allows us to prepare the, um, the slide a little bit. But to be honest, we don't, I mean, we copy the, the, your question into a slide. That's, that's what we do. And you received one. Um, let me share it with you. And it's, it's one of the questions um, last time I'd said, I'm going to push down a bit, like uh, push you later. But uh, let's go for it. It's an interesting question, actually. Um, share my screen. All right. So this is a question here uh, regarding real-time systems. And I need to come on. I'm sorry. I'm doing this for the very first time now. All right, there you go. All right, so, so I have to clean up my desk here. The thing is this. The customer is receiving um, real-time messages, which are however, some form of, yeah, some delta messages, essentially. So every time they receive a message, the business key is there. So that's what they receive, uh, for example, to identify a customer. And um, the, they also receive the attributes that have been uh, changed, essentially, or set to null, null or have been inserted, essentially. So for example, in the first message, they receive a, a new customer. That's why they get a new, uh, many new attributes, for example, including email address and the business key as well. And then a second message that arrives later still contains the business key. And then there was a change on the email address. So what they receive is now the new email address. And um, yeah, right. So they, they receive a new email address. And I think the old email address as well, not sure on that one. And they receive uh, maybe a new attribute, which wasn't there yet. So they must have modified the structure of the message. Um, well, at least they added a attribute to this message the burst place essentially. And that was not existing in the previous message either because um, it, it was never there in the source. Maybe the, they added a field and now it ends up in the JSON message or whatever it is, or XML message. Uh, maybe they, they, they extended this, this source table or the, yeah, the, the emitter, let's say the, the publisher. Um, yeah. And for the information marks, they, they know that they have a couple of attributes they're interested in. And they want to um, use them or display them essentially in the information delivery. How do we do? How do we do this? Now, from a data world architecture, the problem is this. Well, in general, let's, let's talk about general uh, real-time systems first. In general, the problem you're facing is that um, new, no new message has the the full customer record. So, from a design perspective, I would say it's not the best design if you're building. Real-time systems, for example, for integrating um, operational systems or microservices, because then it's you're typically better off if you have the whole customer record, everything you know about the customer, um, or the policy, or whatever it is, the account, the product. If that's in the message, so you can use that that data for integration of microservices, service-oriented architectures, and so on, applications. Um, that's, for example, how we do it internally um, at, at Scalefree. We have these um, cloud services that are that are essentially integrating uh, via a um, um, automated uh, business process tool, essentially, via the REST interfaces. So that's our microservices, essentially. All the REST interfaces are our microservices that we so that we use and pay for, essentially. And um, but then this 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 business process automation system has the whole message. If a new customer gets added, we get the whole customer record. If the customer gets modified, we get the whole customer record. So it's easy to integrate into other applications, essentially. That's the basic idea. What you're facing is when you have only deltas, um, you have to store the data first and then combine the, the latest delta to all the previous deltas to the initial load. And that's, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just uh, ineffective, I would say, inefficient, right? So it's a lot of workload for one message to be processed. So design-wise, I would challenge this, to be honest. Um, but, well, it's what it is, right? So we can't change that. Um, 
what I wouldn't, what people do is sometimes they start using um, in, in Kafka, um, um, setting the message retention period to, uh, to unlimited or something, right? And then misuse, let's go worse for now. They mis start misuse a message topic or message queue for um, storing messages as a storage, right? That's even worse. So if, you, if, if that's the reason why you're starting to store all the messages in Kafka, you just made a bad design decision even worse, essentially, right? Because my argument is a message queue topic is not for, for, for persisting data. It is for transporting data, not for persisting data, right? So, all right, so how do we solve this? <clears throat> because you can't change it. That's what, what it is. That's what you get, right? So um, the first thing is you need to dump the data, right? So you need to store the data somewhere. Um, I would follow the typical design, how we process real-time messages. So a lot of people, sorry, one second. A lot of people want to load a hub customer with a delta-driven satellite for the descriptive data here. That's what I wouldn't do. What I would do is um, I would accept that every message has a, has a, has a different structure, varying structure, and you don't know what the next message will be. Maybe they add another attribute to the publisher. So let's assume, well, we get, that's what we get, right? So first of all, the way we process real-time messages or the, the best efficient effort approach is to store all these real-time messages, not into a hub and a data-driven data satellite, but instead model real-time messages. And real-time messages are events. So we're talking here about a non histrized link typically. Uh, because those are used to capture um, um, uh, events, transactions, messages. That's number one. So the, the base design should be a, a non historized link. Then there is a business key involved. So there might be a customer hub. That's good. And you said that all the messages contain the business key. So that's, that's also indicated that I would have a hub in this case. So I'm extracting the, the business key from the message. And then I'm just storing, dumping the data into a non histrized link as they come. So for every message you receive, you insert a, a record into a non histrized link. That's number one. And by default, we also load the data into the data lake. So I'm just dumping the data into Avro files, into mini partitions, essentially micro partitions, into, um, into Avro files on the data lake. That's the first design. That's the raw data vault, to be honest, if that's the question, right? <laughs> no, but it's, that's really the raw data vault, um, the non histrized link. And then the rest I would do in the business vault or in, yeah, in, in, typically in the business vault um, to combine these messages. And now the question is how to make this efficient because what I want to achieve is I want to combine those messages on the same business key. We have them in the non hisses link. Yeah, you have to apply it delta by delta essentially because uh, the question is how do they remove some attributes, well, they set them back to null, right? Um, there's business logic involved. I mean, you have to calculate which record is the most recent one. The problem is your fate. I mean, the, the, you, you have a semi-structured data set where you have different and varying attributes in there. That's, why, that's what I'm struggling at the moment. So if, if let's say in the JSON, you, have, you might have birth date and the, um, the birthplace. In the next JSON, you get just the birth date. In the next JSON, you get the, the city name of the, the, the shipping address and so on. And now from all these JSONs, because I would, I would store the message as a JSON in the nonsense link, sorry. Of all these JSONs, you need to find out which contain the most recent attributes. And I believe, the way it should work, I, I believe I would use a, a custom, I, I, I believe I would use a, a pit table for this. That's number one, that's my, that's my whole thing at the moment, right? The whole, it's, it's pit tables. Um, yeah, I mean, you, yeah, so here's the thing. You need to calculate uh, a bit. So you need to find out whenever there's a new attribute, what I would do is this, I would use some form of a pit. Uh, you need to create an index now, a custom index more or less. And that's, that sounds like a pit table, but really a heavily modified pit table now. Um, I'm looking essentially for a pivotized pit table where I'm adding one row per customer number, 
low date. Snap, maybe snap, better snapshot date. And then um, per attribute from the source. That's, that's the first thing. And then you need to, to define for every snapshot date, whenever you want to report, what is the most recent description for every attribute from the source, right? Customer, uh, sorry, um, name, birth date, and so on. And then what you do is you activate the delta, the most recent delta that contains the attribute. And when you refer to the satellite for this row, what you do is you indicate the load date of the delta, the hash key of the delta as usual, right? But then you also, and that essentially gives you the delta, the JSON record, where you find the most recent description for this particular attribute you're looking at. And then you provide the, um, the path in the JSON to the descriptive value. That's the third column when you refer to the, to the satellite. Or if the structure is all the same and it's just flat and white, you could just use the, um, because you have the, the alternate key of the pit contains the, um, the uh, column name. So you could use that most probably to directly uh, look into the JSON, the JSON document in the satellite and retrieve the, um, the uh, descriptive data. That's what I would do. So create a pit table where you essentially have the grain based on snapshot date, hash key of the customer number, and the attribute name from the source. And then identify the delta where you find the most recent description for this attribute, for the snapshot date, for this customer number. That's, that's the idea. But it's, it's um, yeah, and you can pre-compute that. And once you pre-computed that, the pre-computation is the, the tricky part here, right? Um, but once you pre-computed that, the access for information delivery is super fast. And you have everything in, in one place available at, at this. So that's the advantage. So I'm creating an index. That's what I would do. Um, all right. So that's the data architecture. So just capture the data as um, messages in a non historized link. And then um, you, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. The pit table typically doesn't uh, refer to non historized links. But in the business world, I'm on top of the non historized link, I would turn this to make it a nice design. I would turn the non historized link into a virtual satellite. Just change the structure so it looks like a satellite. That's it. No delta checking. Every message you receive becomes a, um, a satellite entry, essentially. That's it. Um, yeah. That's just a view on top. And then you can refer this satellite in your pit table. That's the, right, that's the basic idea. To make it essentially a pit table only refers to satellites, right? That's the idea. So, um, yeah. That's the, that's the design. A bit weird, I agree. But here's the thing. My thinking is all about data flows, right? So the, the thing is you're receiving uh, real-time messages, which are messages, that's it. That's why, why I'm modeling these as a non historized link, because I'm just catching them as messages, super dump, just dump them into, um, into the uh, link table, and that's it. One non historized link entry per incoming message, super easy to load. And then you said you want to have a information mark where you would like to have all these attributes with their latest description for the customers in the presentation view. So that's a target. So how do I get from the incoming raw data, which I catch it in the nonsense link, to my target? And that's why I have the data already. It's all there in the raw data world, right? And now I'm indexing the data in a way I can quickly present the information mark, essentially. That's the idea. That's how I'm looking at this. It's, so it's less modeling. It's really about managing data flows. That's what I'm doing here all the time, right? That's the idea. Um, all right. Yeah. And if the JSON is more complicated, you could add to the pit table the, um, the pass inside the JSON, how you receive the descriptive data for that given attribute from the JSON. And then the JSON could even change from one message to the next. Doesn't matter. Works as well. That's what I've done already. So, um, cool. I hope that answers it. Um, if you have a question like this, uh, don't be shy. Just shoot them here on the form. Um, use this HTTPS slash uh, yeah, sfr.ee slash DB Friday. That's a form essentially where you can upload your questions, where you can um, essentially upload pictures or attachments if you want, uh, pictures of a whiteboard to, to, to draw up, draw it up, for example, team pictures, all good. Um, check out also our, our other webinars. And we change the URL a bit, HTTPS scale two, and then webinars. That's where you find um, additional webinars for DBT and for Wordscape at the moment, um, where our experts at scale talk about 
a very similar format to some extent. Talk about DBT and and Wearscape best practices patterns. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Trying to give you some value essentially. All right. Thanks for joining today, and um, yeah, have a nice weekend. See you next Friday, guys. Thank you, guys. And good question, by the way. Thanks for joining today. If you'd like to discuss this further, give us a call on the number below here, and we're happy to discuss this with you. See you next time. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.